Good morning, folks. We've got awesome eye candy, good satellite news, a huge study that will necessitate a mini slap to observers, and I'll be predicting the next uptick in solar flaring, CMEs, and geomagnetic storms affecting the Earth. We are watching the last 24 hours on our star, and apart from minor pops, we basically just have a plasma filament watch. They are indeed all over. Despite the brightness, the sun lacks sunspots capable of turning those magnetic fields into flares, developing quite a bit now for its next uptick, but before we get to that prediction at the end, look what came back online yesterday. A solar wind satellite. Nice of that one to come back as having just one solar wind satellite is somewhat less than ideal. Up next, the eye candy. Folks, this recently performed simulation was aiming to recreate activity at galactic cluster scale long ago. The first galactic cities running along the intergalactic highways of the cosmic web, and while gorgeous, unfortunately this one uses all of the dark matter and dark energy parameters that they truly should know are wrong at this point. Still, wish I had a computer like this for running simulations. Here we come to a new kind of observer slap as these epically on-point papers about solar cardiac effect have recently begun to elicit a new and utterly stupid response from some observers. That response is something like, oh, they want to say it's the sun now, not the jab, and you're helping them, Ben? unsubscribed. Uh, how science works is it takes years to process data, and thus far none of the eight solar cardiac articles from the last two years contain data from 2020 or onward, which means none of the data from the COVID era. I'm on the right side of this one. The prick ain't good for your ticker. It's just that, and I know this might shock some of you, heart attacks were actually a thing before 2020 as well and they are unquestionably and repeatedly proven to have significant correlations with solar and geomagnetic activity. SLAP is an entire chapter in our first textbook and half of one in the new supplement. Now last but not least, website members get to hear about this much more often than you do, but there's about a 5.9 month activity cycle on the sun. This is just one of a dozen papers I could show on the subject, but we were able to predict the uptick earlier this year, if you'll recall, based on what happened in the previous two years. And here, in between the 5.9 month peaks, we've got a much more quiet sun and quiet geomagnetic conditions. The caveat to this is that the run up to the peak is about three to four weeks and it can last from a couple weeks to two months, as was the case at the end of last year when October's uptick rolled into December. That means we are looking at the end of summer for the next activity peak on our star and our magnetic field possible three to four week run up as early as the end of next month. Enjoy your J months as they should be significantly less eruptive than August and September, and hopefully not October too. We greatly appreciate your support. Remember folks, otf.cells.com closes on June 15th. If you got the PDF versions of the textbooks, you need to get those downloaded as soon as possible. We've got shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.